effective are pharmaceutical drugs? Every year, over 200,000 people die of pharmaceutical drug interactions. Most of us trust that the benefits of a drug that our doctor prescribes are going to outweigh the side effects. You'd probably be shocked to learn that most drugs don't do anything good for the majority of the people who use them. According to Dr. Jonathan St. George, who's the Assistant Professor of Emergency Medical at Wheel Cornell Medical College, most chronic diseases involve a complex chain of biochemical interactions. The idea that you're going to take one drug that affects one pathway and dramatically changes the course of that illness is just plain pie in the sky. The statistical measure of this inconvenient truth is called the NNT, or the number needed to treat. That is the number of people who have to take a drug in order for one person to benefit. There are many popular drugs with an NNT over 50. And a drug with an NNT of 5 or lower might very well be considered a wonder drug. If I told a patient that the drug that was prescribed only had a 20% chance of working, they'd look at me like I was crazy. Statins have an NNT of 60 meaning that 60 people would have to take a statin drug for five years to prevent one person from having a non-fatal heart attack. Not one fatal heart attack would be prevented. Picture a similar effect this way. In a study in which a control group of 1,000 people taking a heart, a heart medication suffered 24 heart attacks over the five-year period, while the group on statins only suffered 16. Because these numbers are small, even relatively minor differences between the incidence of heart attacks translate into impressive sounding difference. When you measure it as a percentage, the so-called relative risk, now you've got the makings of an incredible pharmaceutical ad campaign. Statins reduce heart attacks by 33%. Beyond the side effects that the overtreating may suffer for no offsetting gain is what is referred to as the culture of appeal. It's destructive to physicians and to patients who believe, I can forget all about this lifestyle stuff because I can take a pill and I'll be good. The statistics that tell you, you need, what you need to know about the severity of a drug's side effects is called the number needed to harm. The most common side effect of statins is muscle pain and weakness, and in severe cases, muscle breakdown. Here the NNH is 10, 10 to treat, 1 to harm. Mental fuzziness and forgetfulness haven't been rigorously tested enough to even establish an NNH, but there's enough anecdotal evidence to, uh, to cause the FDA to slap a uh, a warning, a, cog a safety warning alert on, on statins. So in this past November, when the panel convened by the American Heart Association and its new guidelines on statin, you know, you really would have expected them to take a more conservative, conservative path in prescribing them, given the possible side effects. The committee recommended new guidelines. If faithfully followed, according to Brown University affiliate cardiologist, Dr. Barbara Roberts, if you put 44 per, it would put 44% of the American men over the age of 40 on statins because the evidence that statins can serve significant, significant heart-lowering protection by lowering LDL was so weak, the committee took a new tack, recommending the drugs for anyone, even at a moderately elevated, for any reason, risk of a heart attack a 7.5% risk over the next 10 years, a figure calculated by the committee's own formula. An article in JAMA Internal Medicine pointed out that the people on statins in this new, broader group would have, according to her calculation, an NNT of 140, 140 to treat for one person to benefit, without there being an overall reduction in death or life-threatening illness. Dr. Roberts wrote, Redbird rather, wrote, statins give the illusion of protection to many people who would be much better served by simply adding an extra 10-minute walk every day. 
For the sake of comparison, a study in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, found, it, found that by going on a Mediterranean diet, heavy on olive oil, nuts and beans, had an NNT of 61. For every 61 people who ate that diet, one was spared a heart attack, a stroke, or a death. That's really not a great number for a drug, but for a diet, it's really not bad. If millions of people ate this way, a lot of people benefit and no one gets hurt. This has an NNH of zero. If you found this article to be interesting, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more total wellness articles. And I would really appreciate it to, to hear a comment. What do you think about what this article has to say? And what's your reaction to it?